I wanted to make something useful with the display modules I showed in a previous video, so I decided to make a live YouTube subscriber counter. I decided to use an AT Tiny 13 to control the display. It's a great little microcontroller that runs fast enough to drive the display, but the main reason I chose it is because you can pick them up for almost nothing on eBay. I got a pack of 10 for around 5 bucks. The display module has 9 inputs, clock, column data, and 7 row select pins, but the AT Tiny has only 5 output pins. As only one row select has to be enabled at a time, I can use a 3 to 8 decoder such as the 74LS138, which will let us control all 7 rows with only 3 microcontroller pins. When shifting column data, all rows must be disabled. We can do this by selecting the 8th output on the 3 to 8 decoder, which is not connected to any row. I still need a way to send data to the microcontroller so it can be displayed, but there are no pins left on the AT Tiny. As I don't need to reset the microcontroller, I can disable the reset pin and use it for data input. The reset pin is also used to make the microcontroller enter programming mode, so I'll need a high voltage programmer if I plan on making any changes to the program. As I only have a single spare pin, I need to use a one wire serial protocol. The AT Tiny 13 lacks a UART, which is useful for receiving serial data so I had to make myself a software UART. I want the display to be compatible with RS-232 level input. As RS-232 allows voltage levels up to plus and minus 15 volts, I need to shift it down to a 5 volt level accepted by the AT Tiny. One of the simplest ways to do this is to use a MOSFET and a pull-up resistor. This will invert the signal, so I'll need to account for this in software. I wasn't sure how I was going to power the display, so I added a 5 volt regulator with a jumper link to bypass it in case I wanted to power it directly from a 5 volt supply such as a USB port. I then cut the board to size and filed down the rough edges. The board smells like it's made of compressed toxic waste, so I used a mask when doing this. I couldn't fit the entire design on a single side, so I soldered a piece of paper clip as a jumper. After soldering the components to the board, it was time to work on the software. An image is rendered on the computer and sent to the display. The protocol is extremely simple. The first byte indicates the start of a transmission and contains brightness data. The following 30 bytes contain pixel data. I wanted to double buff the display to reduce any flicker on transmission, but the AT Tiny has only 64 bytes of RAM, which is not enough to fit multiple buffers. But the flicker is unnoticeable as the transmission only takes a couple of milliseconds. I made a simple application in Java to check that everything was working. This lets me individually toggle each LED and adjust the display brightness. Now that I know everything's working, I can hook into the YouTube API to get my channel subscription count. YouTube provides Java bindings for the API, which makes it really easy to get something working quickly. I made a 5x7 font in Photoshop that I saved as a PNG. This is loaded by the application for drawing numbers. The application gets a subscriber count from YouTube every second. If the count has changed, an image is drawn to the byte array which is then sent to be displayed. The display works as expected. When I subscribe or unsubscribe, the display updates within a few seconds. Thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed, please subscribe and give me a reason to add another digit to the display.